Okay, hello, hey, welcome, uh, bienvenidos, uh, good afternoon, buenas tardes, and uh, all, of, all of that fun stuff. Uh, welcome to another, uh, another section of uh, History of Mexican-American Studies 141. I'm Professor C C Cañedo, or Professor Cañedo, or El Profesor, El Maestro, El Profe. Any of those terms will work uh, just fine when you need to, when, when you need to reach, me with, reach me. And I'm very happy and excited to be with you guys these next eight weeks as we take a look at the early stages of uh, Mexican-American Chicano history, uh, starting roughly from about the time frame of the uh, pre-Olmec uh, era, uh, the early signs of civilization in the Valley of Mexico, Mesoamerica, and finishing up with the... Uh, um, with, with the clash between the U.S. and Mexico, uh, the U.S.-Mexico War Manifest Destiny, and some coverage of the U.S. Civil War, too. Um, uh, some of the elements from the Civil War uh, really go a long way into, in, in, into shaping uh, the, uh, the politics which, uh, which are important to the uh, Chicano Mexican-American people today. I get into a lot more of this stuff in the uh, 142 class. But when we finish off with the class at the end of May, uh, I think a lot of the elements in the in the last eight, in, in the last week of the session will uh, will give you a good jumping off point if you're going on to take the 142 class, whether it's uh, me, with me, whether it's with Mr. Chavez, whether it's uh, uh, Professora Lopez Aramburo, uh, or any of the other uh, fine professors uh, uh, here at uh, Arrowhead Southwestern College. All right, well, listen, uh, in the central introductory video, I'm going to do two things for you. In the first half, I'll go ahead and say things about myself, my background, where, where I'm from, uh, where I'm re recording from. And in the second half of the video, I'll say a few things about the class itself. I'll give you some of the highlights, some of the, uh, the key points, things to be looking out for, uh, the percentages, numbers, all of that fun stuff. And as a submission, as the uh, as the uh, session, I mixed up semester and session, so I came up with a submission. Uh, I guess uh, tell the Webster's people that Professor made up a, a, a new word. Uh, but as a, as the session un unfolds, uh, I will have more videos for you to explain some of the uh, uh, the assignments. And I've also got some old videos uh, which I which I recorded last summer for the summer session 2013 class. So I'm more than happy to share those with you. And in fact, uh, uh, I'll start sharing a couple of, of the of the early videos as the first week on, on false. But first, a few things about El Profesor. All right, well, um, I've been here at Southwestern, teaching at Southwestern off and on since 1997-98, actually. Uh, I've done the mostly the 141, 142. I've done a few sections of 100, uh, 101. I did one of the anthropology uh, sections at the uh, at the old San Isidro campus. I'm talking about the, the old, old site, um, the first, first site where they took over, where the McDonald's tragedy took place about 30 years ago. Uh, uh, and, and currently, I'm, I'm also doing some, uh, I'm doing some work. I'm doing the on-campus section of this class over at the National City H8HEC. A, a, uh, H -H -E uh, but for the most part, I do mostly the online stuff that's been that case for, for about the past uh, four years. I really do enjoy teaching the online sections. And I find it looks like these videos uh, really help to personalize the class a bit more because even though I'm not on the main campus, I think this is a good way for, uh, for all of you to get to know who Il Professor is all about, his motivations, what he likes, all of that, uh, all, all of that good stuff and anything else pertaining to the class. Uh, but besides teaching at, uh, at Southwestern, I've done some work at Grossmont College. I'm still there now. Still, they're now doing online classes, and I'm also at the at Mesa College. I'm doing uh, uh, similar sections of uh, of this class. So, whereas here it's 141 and 142 with Mesa, and also with City, it's 141B and uh, I'm sorry, 141A and 141B. Um, in terms of where I'm from, I'm actually a native of, uh, of the South Bay, born and raised in National City. I went through uh, uh, junior high and high school in Chula Vista. I'm a Hill, Hilltop High graduate. And as for, uh, as for uh, higher education, I stayed in the area. Uh, UCSD is where I have my BA in anthropology. And then I went on to San Diego State and my master's is in Latin American studies from SDSU. So not surprisingly, I'm definitely quite happy with the Aztecs. Uh, I'm going to have a tough run with Arizona, but I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Coach Fisher has a few tricks up his sleeve and, uh, and, and, and gets the upset over, uh, over Arizona. So I'll definitely keep an eye out, uh, out on that. Uh, but even though I'm native, native of, uh, of, the, uh, of the South Bay, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not actually in the South Bay anymore. In fact, I'm not even in San Diego County. I'm in Riverside County. Um, I'm just north in the, in the Temecula Marietta section in a little patch called French Valley, uh, which is which is roughly to the north of Temecula and to the east of Marietta. So if you know the Highway 79, if you take the 79 from uh, Temecula into, into Hemet, and then all the way on toward uh, to the east toward Palm Springs and Palm Desert. Our march the 79 where the little airport is located. So if so, if you uh, come to Temecula, take the Winchester Road exit, you go north about 10, about 
about 10, 15 minutes, and El Profesor is in that little, uh, uh, little area. Uh, so even though there, there are things, things about Sango that, that, that I do miss, I do like living out here. I've been out, out here for 18 months, and uh, I think compared to the prices back in San Diego, you really can't beat the prices out, out here, at least for the time being. That might change in the next few years, but for the most part, it's a pretty, pretty uh, the homes uh, out here, definitely much, much better deal than what you get back in, uh, in San Diego. And I'm sure uh, L.A. and Orange County, it's definitely in, in that, same, that same category. As for my teaching interests and outside interests, well, teaching, I love the teaching this class. I love teaching the, uh, the early uh, Mesoamericans, the Aztecs, the Maya, the Toltecs, uh, uh, the uh, Teotihuacan. So we'll get into a lot of that in the first three weeks of the session. And then, of course, Manifest Destiny is one of my favorite topics, too. So we'll get into a lot of that in the uh, seventh and, and the eighth week as the U.S. and the Mexico clash. But I also love covering uh, U.S. history, uh, modern U.S. history, uh, labor issues. So I, I'm doing that section for, for Grossmont, and I'm also interested in politics. So world wars really fascinate me, not just World War II, but World War I. And of course, the situation in Russia with Ukraine, that really fascinates me. And that's something I'm actually covering a little bit of, taking a little bit of time to talk about in my, uh, in, uh, in, in, in my Grossmont class. Um, as for uh, outside interests, things that uh, El Profesor does when he's not being uh, El Profesor, uh, as you can see, you can probably make out, I'm um, definitely a fan of the National Hockey League. So it's an old Mighty Ducks jacket. Uh, they got rid of this logo years ago, but that's a classic one they had when they joined the, the league back in uh, 1993, so 20 years. Uh, so I've been a, fan of, been a fan of the Ducks for 20 years. Uh, I still love them now, but I also love the Red Wings. I like the, uh, the Rangers and the Sharks. Uh, so hockey is definitely my favorite spectator sport, but I love baseball too. I'm a big fan of the Tigers, and uh, some of you probably aren't going to be happy about this, but I love the Dodgers. Uh, I used to like the Padres a lot when I was much, much younger, but, uh, but I really started to like the Dodgers in the last few years, especially living out here. And, uh, uh, and I definitely like, like, like the way they play. I, like, I love the players too. I love Yasel Puig, Adrian Gonzalez, uh, Clayton Kershaw. And uh, so, uh, so, so I hope you Padres and Giants fans won't be too, too mad at me, but, uh, but look at it this way. The class ends before the season really, really gets going. So, uh, but, uh, so, uh, but I'm sure people in, people in the summer and the fall sections with me might be a little bit more upset with me because that's when the, the season really, really gets going with the pennant races. Uh, Oh, and as for football, I'm not really a big fan of football per se, uh, but uh, I do like the Lions, but they've been uh, up and down, so uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they have another rough season coming up in the coming up in, in, in the fall. And basketball, I'm not really a big fan of basketball that much, but I like the Clippers, so I'm definitely happy for them, and I'm really just uh, intrigued, and, and just it's just crazy the way the Lakers are right now. So, uh, But maybe things will improve for them, and the Clippers and Lakers will actually be, be good at the same time. Uh, those of you longtime sports fans know that the Lakers have always been the big guys, the Clippers low men on totem pole. This is the exact opposite. So it'd be nice uh, eventually if both teams are, are good and maybe meet in the playoffs. But I don't know if that's going to happen for any, any, uh, any time in the, in, the, in the near future. Other interests, uh, <clears throat> uh, I like... Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, 1980s uh, music, especially the rock and roll. So all the uh, uh, all the uh, glam rock, uh, heavy metal stuff, whether it's a Bon Jovi, Def Leppard, a Motley Crue, uh, Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, all, all of that. I love that. But I love the 70s stuff too. So whether it's the early Aerosmith, the uh, Steely Dan, the Eagles, ZZ Top, all of that. So basically, if it's anything that was recorded between 1969 and 1991, I'll listen to it, but, uh, but everything else, like the new stuff with Katy Perry and uh, uh, Beyonce and uh, who's the other one that's really popular, uh, Miley Cyrus, I don't know what they're all about, so I guess that's just part of being, uh, uh, being in one of the uh, uh, older generations, I guess you could say. Um, and, and, what, and one other thing, uh, um, uh, I'm also I'm also a fan of, uh, of, uh, of 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 pets, and I have uh, three cats. Uh, uh, in future videos, you'll uh, you'll get a chance to meet them. And in fact, in some of the videos I recorded for the summer session, some of the cats do join join me there. So uh, so when I show you some of my older videos from the summer, you'll get a chance to meet some of my my feline friends. I'll tell you more about them as the uh, as the semester uh, semester unfolds. But I have two of them who are outside and one who's inside. The one who's inside looks like she's kind of she's taking a nap right now. Uh, but maybe in the future video she'll she'll join me uh, as I record here from my home office. Okay, so that's me. That's uh, in essence what El Profesor is all about. So let me go ahead and, and turn and, and switch gears, and uh, I'll go and say a few things a little bit more about the class. But first, let me just take a quick uh, quick breather here. And as I mentioned, uh, since uh, you can tell the Profesor loves cats, check out what's on my on my on my uh, uh, coffee cup here. <clears throat> 
All right. Okay. Let me go ahead now and say a few things about the class. Uh, I don't think I'll be getting a chance to cover everything, but I'll cover all the basics, the nuts and bolts, and in future videos, I will, of course, elaborate more upon various elements, especially some of the assignments. By now, you've all had a chance to look at the syllabus, so it's just a quick description in terms of uh, what the class is about, how you can reach me, reach me at my Southwestern e e email. Um, reach me through that uh, for now, but once the session gets going, start using Messages for Professor, which is one of the uh, tools right there in the menu in Blackboard. So start using that pretty soon, but for the time being, if you're comfortable using the uh, the email, then by all means contact me at my Southwestern uh, email. Um, all right, the syllabus just illustrates the learning objectives what we're going to try to accomplish, so we'll cover the vast majority of the topics uh, here. Uh, the two books, oh, let me get the books out. I've got them right here on the side right now, so just bear with me for a second. Okay, we've got two books here in the class. Uh, first book you want to get right now is Ancient Mexico by Jacqueline Lathrop. Uh, we'll use this book ex extensively the first three weeks, so make sure you get a copy. I know it's really pricey. Uh, unfortunately, Ken uh, the Kendall Hook Company insists on really making these books pricey, uh, but I keep using this book time and time again, so if you buy it, you can definitely resell it at the end of the session, but I believe at the bookstore now, you can actually rent uh, rent this. Uh, you can rent both uh, uh, new and uh, end use copies, so check with a bookstore. Uh, I think you check with, with, with Deborah Williams there at the bookstore or any of the other uh, uh, people or the student workers there who can help you. But again, make sure you get your hands on Ancient Mexico. Get the 10th edition for the first the three weeks. And then in the remaining five weeks, from weeks four through eight, we'll use Microdance Between the Conquests. Um, Mike's book is also a little bit pricey too. Um, if you have the older edition, because uh, this is the fifth edition, the fourth edition uh, uh, will work to some extent, but Mike made some changes between the uh, fourth and fifth edition, so I highly recommend you get the new edition of this one too. But uh, but again, uh, uh, I know these two uh, these two run a little bit. Uh, uh, I guess beyond the pale, for lack of a better term, but I do keep using these books constantly, so at the end of the session, you can definitely resell them, I guess sell them back to the bookstore, or go across the street to Otay Books in the uh, shopping complex off of uh, uh, on Otay Lakes Road, and they'll be more than happy to uh, to take these off, off your hands, But or or if you know people taking the class in the summer or in the, uh, in the fall, go ahead and, and sell the books to them, but, uh, but I don't make changes with the books, I keep using these, so I think by, by that perspective, that'll definitely help out with the uh, with a cost uh, 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 issue. All right. Um, okay, I've got information here about disability, plagiarism, academic success. So, uh, so uh, just something I have to have it in 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 this in, this, in uh, all my syllabi. All the instructors have to have things l l like that. And then uh, and then I have the lessons. So I outline what's happening in the first week. So in the first week, we'll go ahead and start with the uh, with uh, with ancient Mexico. Start with the first eighty one pages. I've got PowerPoint programs uh, uh, and National Geographic article, and uh, uh, and then uh, we have group discussions and we have quizzes. So I'll talk a little bit more about that when I explain those uh, in more detail in the next couple couple seconds. But skim through the, le the lessons because that explains what's happening on a weekly basis, starting now up until the end the end of the session, which takes us all the way up to the up toward Memorial Day. So uh, roughly around May twenty third. It's when the class starts starts wrapping up. And uh, even the Memorial Day was going to cut into that after on the May 27th. I'm going to keep the class open until about the 29th to finish off uh, to finish off uh, whatever we have to finish off with. So technically, even though we're supposed to finish on the 23rd, I'll keep I'll keep the class open until about the uh, 28th and 29th to wrap up any uh, any loose ends that might that might be out there as uh, we uh, as we start finishing up the uh, the, the semester. Okay, and then at the uh, and then at the bottom, I've got the course grading structure stru uh, structure. So quizzes will count as thirty percent. Book review will be thirty twenty percent. The EBSCO article review will be fifteen percent. The U.S. Mexico War Summit is fifteen. Also, uh, I've got something called Chicano time travel, in which you're going to uh, uh, submit four journals during the course of the session, in which you're going to be back in time interviewing people from. Uh, from uh, whether it be Cortez, Moctezuma, or maybe, or, or maybe uh, uh, Benito, uh, uh, Miguel Hidalgo, Father Morello, some of the Mexican independence heroes, or anyone else in between in the scope of early, uh, of early Chicano history, early Mexican American history. I'm going to make a video specifically about the journals. I'll have that for you probably, uh, probably next week, uh, the week of the, so after, after March 31st, but just be aware that you've got a journal assignment in which you punch your answers directly into, uh, into, uh, into Blackboard. You don't have to send me 
any uh, uh, any files. And then we have the discussion forums, which I'll say a few things about in just a second here. Okay, what I want to do right now is let me quickly go over what's uh, what's in each uh, each item in the course menu. So this is the blue section when you go in, into the class, and which which lists everything. So everything from announcements down through uh, class videos, time travel journal, and quizzes. Let me quickly illustrate what's happening in each section. Announcements is a uh, self-explanatory. I'm going to give you announcements so roughly every day for the first two weeks to get to get everybody going and, and, and settled. And then about the third week, I figure I'll space the announcements more about about two, three times a week, roughly on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday schedule, or Monday, Thursday, and Friday. But I'll determine that in more detail about the third week. But for, the, for now, for the first two weeks, I'll definitely be with you uh, every day as we get this, this session going. All right, weekly modules. This is a really important uh, element. I want to go ahead and uh, talk uh, a little bit in depth about that. Weekly modules is going, to, uh, is going to pinpoint what you're going to be doing on a weekly basis. And uh, the modules not only tell you what the readings are from the books, but also the uh, power performance you're, you're to be looking at and also any PDF articles. And all those things are housed within the modules that, that themselves. So you just go into each, each module. And in fact, I'll open up one right now. All right, so uh, the first, so where it says first week module, archaic and pre-class pre-class periods in Mesoamerica, open that up because that tells you what the readings are, that tells you what uh, PowerPoint programs you have to you have to look at, what articles you need to, you need to look at, and anything, and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, but most importantly, I think the most, besides the items themselves, I've also got something called module overviews. This basically illustrates, okay, uh, we're, gonna, we're covering this, everybody, um, we're going to talk about that, then we'll move on to this, uh, but, but in the modules, I'll also mention how you to structure the reading or how to frame reading. So I'm going to tell, okay, what we should do, everybody, is read this part of ancient Mexico first, see where Lathrop talks about this, then look at the Olmec program, and then look at the Olmec article. Once you do all of that, then watch the film. Or I might say, watch the film first, then then look at the ancient Mexico stuff, and then look, look at the articles. But for each mo weekly uh, module overview essay, I explain the best path to approach the readings. And one other thing, too, that's also going to be helpful is that in the summer session, I made I made some uh, preview of videos about the modules and the module essays. So that's another recourse that you can you can have. And in fact, uh, if you want to go ahead and go into my YouTube uh, 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 video section and look at what I have through the uh, the uh, the uh, oh, the video about the first week module, you can do that r r right now because even though the information is for the summer class, so I'm going to so I'll probably mention dates about uh, about uh, June nineteenth uh, or July first, blah blah blah. Don't worry about that. What is important is what I say in, in terms of the content. And uh, and again, if you want to go ahead and look look in those right uh, now, you can you can you, you can. But uh, during uh, during my next announcement, I'll say a few more things about uh, uh, say a few more things about that. But again, learning modules, weekly modules, are very important because that tells not only what the readings are, but how you should approach them, uh, and including the and including the the the, 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 the films too. Okay, course content. This just has. Uh, this, this is just how, where I house all the uh, all the main documents for the class: uh, PowerPoint programs, uh, Word and PDF documents, online articles, videos. We're going to have a video every week. Our first video this week is going to be about Mesopotamia, the uh, uh, the, the ancient Sumerians, the, the early peoples of Iraq. Uh, even though it's a little bit off the uh, the scope of the class, it's about the foundings of civilization, which I feel are quite uh, relevant in talking about civilization in Mesoamerica. So you want to go and check that out uh, this, this week. U.S. lecture outlines, these will come into play about the fourth week, so I'll talk more about those as we get into uh, the uh, sec, the uh, middle part of, this, of the session. And digital history recommended readings. Uh, if you want to have some uh, backup information on certain, on, uh, certain points about the class, <clears throat> excuse me, then, uh, our, then you can go ahead and check because that's from the University of, of Houston. I gotta double check the links there, but to make sure the links are working because I think, uh, I think they have a tendency to uh, change the links every semester. So let me look at these during the week and make sure the links are working properly. But again, we're not gonna get into this until the uh, midpoint of the session. And again, these are optional. So if you want this resource, then it's definitely available for you. Okay, assignments. Let me quickly go over each assignment and then I'll, I'll have more videos uh, to outline what's happening in each assignment. Um, um, you've, um, okay. Okay. 
Let me quickly talk about the writing assignments first. Okay, you've got a uh, you've got something called the EBSCO article review, in which you're to go into the uh, Southwestern College Library data uh, uh, South, Southwestern College website and look at look at some online articles from the uh, data the EBSCO database. I'll, I'll make a video with more detail about what you have to do, but to give you the the basics, you, know, you just find an article pertaining to the scope of uh, early Mesoamerican history, so the Aztecs, the Maya, the Toltecs, the Teotihuacan. The, the Olmecs, uh, other, other cultures, and, uh, uh, and uh, find an academic journal. Journal is an academic magazine, and, each, and in the magazine you'd find an, an article, an academic article, which talks about these, very, these various uh, cultures. So this thing's not going to be due until May 9th, but I will make another video about, about this uh, probably in the next, uh, probably about two weeks from now. I'll have more details about how you're to, how you're, you're to structure your EBSCO uh, assignment. But again, what you have to do here is you have to go into the, uh, the, the Southwestern LRC website and uh, look, at, look at the database of listings there. Okay, book review, fairly self-explanatory. Uh, a book about any uh, type of uh, uh, topic within the scope of the class. So, what do you want to look at? Look at a book about the Aztecs, the Maya, uh, the Teotihuacan, De uh, the uh, the Spaniards, Cortes, uh, Cabeza de, de Vaca, Coronado, and all the way down into uh, the U.S.-Mexico War, the the Battle of Santa Ana, uh, uh, President Polk, General Scott, General Taylor, all those guys. Uh, you've got a wide range to choose from, and uh, on the assignment worksheet, because uh, with each assignment, I've got these PDF files, these uh, assignment worksheets, which give you more details in terms of what you need to do. So once you start getting ready to see what the assignments are all about, not only look go in the assignment section, but download the PDF files I have attached. Those give you more details in terms of what you have to do. And then the other, uh, the last major writing assignment is the uh, U.S.-Mexico War uh, uh, PBS assignment in which you're to look at articles from the uh, PBS website about the, about the documentary that came out in 1998. So uh, uh, I'll have a, like, uh, uh, like with the EBSCO uh, uh, assignment, I'll have a video about this. So roughly, I would say about the fourth week, I'll have this video ready, ready for you. And in fact, I, if I recall correctly, I may have made one for the sub for the uh, for the summer class. So I'll double check all my video links there. And if there's one for the summer class, I'll go ahead and uh, and uh, rebroadcast it here here for you guys. But again, uh, for sure for EBSCO and the U.S. Mexico War assignments, I'll I'll have uh, more specific videos about what you need to do for for these respective assignments. For the book review, fairly self-explanatory. I don't need to make a video for that. But for sure, for EBSCO and U.S.-Mexico War, there'll be some more uh, video resources for you to check out. Okay, discussion boards. Discussion boards is going to make up 10%, and what's going to happen is I'm going to split up the class into three large groups. Each group is going to be responsible for covering one form per, per week. And uh, within the next two days, I'm going to start making up the three discussion groups. So if you look at the discussion board now, you notice uh, the forms are there. Uh, but the groups haven't been set up, and you notice that the dates are still off. The dates still pertain to the summer session. I'm going to fix that in the next couple of days. So once I start fixing that, then I'm going to assign everybody to uh, to, to to a group. So if your name uh, is uh, <clears throat> is first in the alphabet, last names are like, like Alcala, uh, a a Anderson, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, Akbar. If your last name begins with A, you'll be in group one. Conversely, if your last name is toward the end of the alphabet, like uh, Cepeda, Williams, uh, uh, you, you, uh, um, then you'll definitely be in group three. Everyone else will be pretty much in, in between. So if your last name is the middle of the road and alphabet, alphabet wise, like, uh, like, like, like Jones, uh, 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 Jones, J J Jackson, uh, Mar Mar Martinez, uh, uh, Martin, you get the idea. You'll probably be in group group two. So let me look at, at the at the class list, and then uh, for sure by the by the middle of the week, all the groups will be arranged, and then I'll have more instructions in the forms in terms of what you need to do. So, uh, uh, so just so just watch my announcements for for that information. Okay, quizzes. Oh, Master for Press, let me quickly say that. This is where you can contact me. So uh, so I would say about the second week, start using this in, in a more regular manner to contact me uh, instead of using the uh, uh, the email, my uh, my Southwestern email. Okay, quizzes. We're gonna have, there's going to be eight quizzes during the course of, of the session, and each quiz will, will, have, will be 30 questions, multiple choice, some true-false, but mostly multiple choice, covering various aspects of, of, of the class. Your best the seven quizzes out of eight will, will count as... 30%, so it's going to be your average of your best seven, which will make up 30% of your class grade. The lowest one gets tossed out automatically. And uh, um, and the first quiz I'm going to open up 
next week. So next Tuesday, that'll put us, uh, I think that'll put us on, uh, on, on the first, I believe, April 1st. So uh, I'm not trying to be April Fool's joke, anything like, like that, but that's where, where the cal calendar kind of uh, kind of came into being. So uh, so for the first quiz, it'll be on a Tuesday to Friday time frame. It'll be open for uh, three days. And when you start a quiz, you've got two hours to work on it. Uh, but after quiz one, then starting with quiz two, they'll be on a Friday to Monday time frame. The reason that I'm, I'm opening up quiz one later instead of this Friday is to give everybody time to get settled in the class, welcome the new people, the crashers, the waitlist people, uh, make sure everyone's got, got the book. So we'll, we'll, we'll let a week go by until everyone gets settled in, and then we'll start with quiz one. But once we get to quiz two, then we'll go on a Monday to uh, uh, I'm sorry, Friday to Monday schedule, uh, and that'll be the the plan for the rest of the session, all the way up until the end of end of the end of the session into late late May. All right, I'll talk more about, of course, about all this when we get into into next week's uh, session. Okay, Chicano Time Traveler Journal. These are the journal entries in which you're going to post. You're going to post uh, four entries during the course of the uh, session every two weeks. Uh, uh, make up a, a character or, or pretend that you're back in time and interviewing people from the uh, from the previous two weeks of, of the session. So here's so here's what I mean. Um, in the first two weeks, we're looking at Mesoamerica. We're looking at the uh, we're looking at the, the at the at the Olmecs, at the Maya, at Teotihuacan. So basically, your job is is to is to pretend that you're back in time. You're back in the eighth century A A A.D. and uh, you're there and you're there at Teotihuacan and you meet some people and you interview some people. Uh, <clears throat> In, 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 interview a, a king, interview a chieftain, interview a, a laborer, a slave, or, or whatever. So basically, everybody, I want you to pretend that you're uh, you're going back in time, like in that old uh, 1980s uh, TV show, Quantum Leap, which was popular in the late in the late 80s, or like uh, like the cart like the like the like the cartoon uh, uh, Peabody and Sherman. It's a movie now, but it was a cartoon back in the 1960s. So they traveled back in time. So. Put yourself back in that in that mode and go back in time and interview people and uh, uh, or pretend that you're somebody from that era in time and then you're talking to people in the 20th century. I've already got a sample for you in terms of uh, in, in terms of me being a uh, uh, one of the uh, the men who was with Cortez in 1521. So uh, so I've got that uh, so I've got that already queued up for, for you. But uh, but again, uh, you, you to do this every every two weeks. The due dates are uh, are on Mondays. Um, and I've, I've got all those all those dates, of course, listed on, on the syllabus and the schedule. But every two weeks, get, uh, right into the into Blackboard itself, go into the uh, uh, time travel journal section, uh, type in your entries, and then uh, and then you're you're and then you're you're good to go. Each entry is going to be worth twenty five points total. So overall, it's going to be hundred points uh, for for your four for your four entries. So definitely try to be as detailed as possible that you're that, that you're uh, in the heart of heart of things uh, that you're re reporting on all kinds of uh, all kinds of amazing events going on so again you can either be uh, yourself going back in time to interview somebody from that era whether it's uh, whether it's an Olmec leader uh, whether it's a, a farmer and Teotihuacan or you yourself pretend that you're somebody uh, that you're an Olmec uh, and then and then you're telling people in the in the 21st century about, about who you are. But if you have a question about that, of course, just let me know. But hopefully, this gave you gave you a sense of what this is going to be all about. Okay, I'll quickly finish off with these last few sections, class videos. These where you find the videos for the for the class. So the video this week about Meso Mesopotamia, that's ready to go. So go in, in there and find that. And then my YouTube videos again. These are all these videos I made for the summer session last year. I'm going to add some more videos for the for for this session. Uh, <clears throat> Um, but uh, but as the session progresses, I will of course share share with you these videos from the summer because the information from the summer class does uh, cor uh, cor correlate uh, correspond to what we're doing for this session. All right, let me start stopping this video because I think we're running way uh, well beyond we're run running close to about twenty minutes here. So let me go and stop it here. Uh, this will probably be the longest video I'll make for you during the course of the session. Uh, I'll keep the videos more and more condensed as we as we go forward. But I think for for this initial video, it was important for me to. Uh, Say as much as possible, try to cover all the main angles and ideas and points and this and that and blah, 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 and all, and all the other administrative nuts and bolts stuff. But uh, whatever I didn't finish or cover in, in this, don't worry, I'll make other videos or I'll, I'll talk more about, the, uh, about all of this when I, uh, 
when I post my information on the announcement section. So, that, so that's a class, everybody. That's what we're going to be doing for these next eight weeks. I hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, if you have any concerns or questions about anything, of course, reach me at my Southwestern email, or you can start using Messages for Professor located right there in, in, in Blackboard. So that's from here. That's it from my, uh, my, my hideaway here in, the, here in the Southwestern Riverside County. So hope you like the class. I'm, going to, I'm really excited to be with you these next eight weeks, and I'll talk to you guys again real soon with my next video.